This is Sienna, and you are listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. Hey, 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 what is going on, party people? BQ here with the King of the Mountain Radio YouTube channel. I know you clicked on this link because you're ready to hear my interview with GFW Knockout Alley, but let me get my marketing out of the way real quick, and then we will get it cracking. Whatever platform you are listening to me on right now, please hit the subscribe button, follow button, whatever it is to stay up with the podcast. I do a podcast each week called the King of the Mountain Podcast, where I'm, I don't want to call it a review because I'm not an expert, but we're talking impact wrestling each week. And I have a guest that hops on with me every week and we talk about the show when we have fun talking about the show. It's nothing, uh, nothing negative. We just have a good time and we, uh, we analyze the show from a fan's perspective. If you're listening on YouTube right now, definitely hit that subscribe button because this is quickly becoming the number one channel for the Global Force Wrestling fan. The uh, positive fan who's, who's done with the trolls, done with the negativity, just want to find a home on YouTube where they can just talk with other fans. And I upload content just about every day, some kind of vlog, some kind of uh, review, some kind of interview, um, breaking news, whatever. It's uh, I've got a plethora of things that I do upload. Sometimes I upload seven days a week, but try not to overload people. But this is the place to be. If you're a Global Force Wrestling fan, so please hit that subscribe button. So on the show, I had Ali. This was a lot of fun. Great interview. Um, I was blessed to be able to speak to her. And uh, if you listen to my interview with Sienna, you know, that one was very, uh, very raw. And she had a lot to say <laughs> and uh, get stuff off her chest and address the trolls and all that. Like, obviously, speaking with Ali, it's a uh, lot more laid back and... Um, I don't take opportunities like this lightly, so I wanted to conduct a really good, entertaining interview, and it's, uh, you know, I pride myself in giving the kind of interviews that the Global Force Wrestling fan wants to hear. Not when you go to another podcast site or another website, and it's just a bunch of generic questions about when they started wrestling and when they're going to WWE. My interviews are not like that. This is this is for the GFW fan. It's for the Impact Wrestling fan. And I really hope you enjoy the interview with Allie. Without further ado, here's the interview. All right. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. On the line right now, I have one of the most popular knockouts in Global Force Wrestling. She's a former knockouts champion. She loves coffee. She loves cows. She's all about the hummus, but she hates video editing. <laughs> the one and only Allie. Allie, welcome to the show. <laughs> I love that intro. That intro is bang on. I do love coffee. I do love cows. I do like hummus. And you're right. I have a love-hate relationship with editing. <laughs> Your video about that was super funny. Um, and I'm totally going to get that. Yeah. So there's tofu, hummus. I I'm keeping up with all this stuff watching your videos, even though it's nothing I ever eat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to eat some tofu. <laughs> I feel like people in general are like afraid of tofu because... They don't know how to cook it or like what to do with it. But once you get the hang of it, it's super good. I just ate a whole bunch of it. You do some on your channel. You do some recipes and stuff. And I, I won't lie. They look really, really good. They're complete opposite of anything I eat, but, but they look good. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's funny because usually like I, I really don't make a lot of like fancy food during the week. I just sort of like throw all kinds of vegetables and some tofu or like plant based protein into a bowl and throw some sauce on there. And like, that's, that's what I eat majority of the time. So I have to like really think about like on my channel, I have to like think like, well, people will probably want to see like more creativity with these meals. So like I really have to like try to <laughs> make them look more appealing, you know? So the million dollar question, does your husband eat this stuff? No. So you cook for no, one. He does not. I do. Yeah. We totally, Cause he has like a meal meal prep service that he um, gets. It's called WTF chef and they make all his food for him. So he doesn't really cook anything. Um, and so he eats those meals and then I just make my, you know, tempeh or tofu or seitan or whatever I'm making. Does that have to do with the WTF gym? Yeah, they're actually, it's the same company. They they own a gym and they own a um, meal prep service. And I think they own an MMA school. I could be wrong. I, I, have, I think they do. I have to admit, it's really funny on your channel for you to say WTF so straight faced. <laughs> it's wellness through fitness. Ah, okay. Come on, all right? <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm not going to waste any time here. This is most possibly the most important question I'll ask because it's something I've always wanted to know, and you're the best person to ask. Why is it that when women drink coffee, they hold the mug with both hands? <laughs> it's because we're giving it a hug. Is that it's what a it hug is? And a mug. <laughs> yes. I've always wondered because a guy just has you know the finger in there, hand on the hip or something, and then the women always have both hands like. Maybe it keeps your hands warm or something. I don't know. Oh, my God. You know, I never really thought about that until right now. And it's now that I'm thinking about it, it's true. I do hold my coffee with both hands. I think it's just for me, I'm I'm hugging it because I love it so dearly. <laughs> my favorite mug you have that I've seen on your channel has the cow udder at the bottom. <gasps> yeah, that's my favorite mug. And it just like chipped on me. I'm so sad. Oh, no. I know it is my favorite. I I love cows. I love them so much. <laughs> um, there was so we were talking about the video where you're talking about you hate editing. I thought that mm -hmm. one was super funny because everyone you come in contact with, you were like, they were saying, "Hey, shouldn't you be editing your video?" <laughs> that that video was like so true to life, like that. As, and I'm sure if you've edited before, it's almost like you contemplate your entire life while you're editing a video. Like you contemplate everything that brought you to the moment where you're sitting in front of your computer trying to get the like shot to look just the way you want or to like get the music to, to sit just the way you want or whatever. Like you're literally like sitting there like contemplating everything that you've just done to like bring yourself to that point and like I've even caught myself and I'm sure other people that edit will understand this like I will spend like a solid 45 minutes on literally like 30 seconds of footage just because <laughs> I'm trying to get the edit right you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's a labor of love so we're talking about the Ali's World YouTube channel and for the listeners I'm going to put the link in the description of the video if you're listening on YouTube uh, if you're listening on iTunes, obviously you can't click on it, but I'm going to put it in the YouTube link. Um, what was, uh, I want to ask you, what made you want to get into the YouTube game? Cause as a fellow YouTuber, it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, so what made you want to have your own channel and everything? Cause now, now even Madison rain has her own channel. I don't know if you watched it or not. It's a little similar to yours, but yeah, yeah, I did. I saw we're actually, I'm really excited. We're actually planning to do a collaboration soon. So that'll be really, really fun. Um, but okay. So why I started YouTube, it's going to sound really weird, I think, but so the thought of putting myself out there and like myself, myself, not, not like as a character or not even as a wrestler, like to put my actual personal life sort of out there was like really scary for me. And it brought me a lot of anxiety, even thinking about it. But one of the things that helps me cope with having anxiety, which I do have anxiety, um, is like doing things that freak me out. And like, I think it'd been like about a year before I started my YouTube channel that I was thinking about starting it. And mostly it was just so that I could get over that like fear of like putting it all out there and, and putting it out there for people to, to criticize or to you know, judge me by, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of like, I know that sounds strange, like that, that was the motivation behind it, but that really was what it stemmed from was like wanting to overcome a really big fear that I had. And every single time I put a video up, like I have, I'm stressing out, like stressing out, like thinking about like what people are going to think. And, you know, am I, are people going to think like I'm stupid or, or that I don't know what I'm doing or my videos are terrible. Like I have these irrational fears every single up time I upload. Um, so it's like kind of cathartic to actually do it. And so that's kind of like, that's kind of how it started. That's why I started doing it. But I think that's what makes it so successful because I think there's a good number of your audience really relate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everyone has those. I mean, right now I'm talking to you and I've looked at my computer to the side here. Um, about 20 times to make sure it's recording, you know, like there's, I have, yes, I have anxiety yes. every time I do a <laughs> podcast. So, yes. Um, yeah. It's, and like, I think sometimes people don't, well, especially because like with, with pro wrestling, right? Like where we have like a persona and a character. And a lot of the times, like for me anyways, when I looked up to wrestlers as a kid, like they just seemed very larger than life and able to like overcome anything. And, and I feel like maybe 
sometimes people don't realize like that that they're people just like everybody else with the same irrational fears and anxieties and struggles. And no one really gets to see like the struggles that happen. They just sort of see the end result. And like, that was one of the things that I wanted to show on my channel was like, you know, what's happening behind the scenes? Like, what am I struggling with or what am I working on or how am I trying to improve myself or better myself or, you know, all of those things, because I feel like it is so relatable for me too. Like I, I watch other YouTubers for inspiration um, and all aspects of life, you know? So that's, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a, it's a nice platform to be able to do that. I think what I really enjoy is how natural and candid you are because you don't get on there and try to be someone that you're not. You're, you're just you. And, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're hilarious. But no, no way. I, I seriously, I don't know. <laughs> I watch your videos. I'm like, I don't know if she's trying to be funny or she even knows that she's being funny, <laughs> but I crack okay. it. There was one time you were talking about um, vegan dining and you were scanning with the camera and then you stopped to focus on your cup of coffee for like just an extra second longer than everything else. And then you continue <laughs> scanning and I just started laughing so hard because it was like you were making sure the coffee and no one else probably caught that. But it, it was like you were just making sure the coffee had its moment to shine real quick. <laughs> Listen, it, it, without coffee, I don't think I would be able to do any of the things that I do in a day. How many? Do, <laughs> it is how, the, it's a star. How, how many cups do you drink in a day? Um, is it uh, one of those I'm things like, you keep going with, or I'm like ashamed to say it. So right now I'm like probably like three or four cups, but like I used to be way worse. Like I used to just be drinking all day, and now I'm like I'm really trying to like pump the brakes. And it's so funny. I was just texting with one of my best friends the other day and I was like, oh, I'm really trying hard to cut back on coffee. You know, it's like my one vice and I'm, I'm really trying to get it under control. And as I was texting him that I was walking to the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly I'm not doing too good at that. But um, and, and the other thing, too, like going back to like me being like funny, like like I don't think I'm funny at all, like at all at all. But I was texting another one of my friends yesterday and I was asking because I'm in the process of like putting together a blog. So I messaged her and I'm like, I need like descriptive words that describe me. <laughs> Can you help me? And she's like, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay. Goofy. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, what? That's what you think of me? I'm goofy. <laughs> no girl wants to be told they're goofy. <laughs> oh, I had such a good laugh. We laughed really hard at that. So I don't know. I guess I am kind of goofy. My brother and I, um, he's on West Coast time, so he watches Impact a couple hours after me. But every mm -hmm. single time you are on the screen, we are guaranteed to text between one one another and laugh about something you said or did. <laughs> it's to the point now we just write, Ali's hilarious. And we know exactly <laughs> what the other one's talking about. I think, oh, as long as you guys are laughing with me. <laughs> the, the time you had me in tears was the um, setting up the bachelor bachelorette party for uh, Laurel and this, the camera just zooms in, everyone walks in and you're just standing there super proud of yourself <laughs> with the streamers and pinata. I was, I was in tears laughing. Hey, look at, that was a really good room. Was it not? It there was. was a pinata. I don't know if you caught that, but his name was Chad. Was it Chad or Carl? I can't remember which one I named him. I think I named him it was Carl. Carl. Yeah, I yeah. think I named him. I was on the fence. I was either going to call him Chad or Carl, but, um, it was a pretty fun room. I would like that room for my bachelorette, right? <laughs> I, know, I know you would. That was uh, that cracked me up. So, I do want to talk about wrestling here for a second. Transitioning, you just had the live events with Impact, and and you know I know you you travel all the time and wrestle mm -hmm. here and wrestle there. But how was it like traveling with this group of gals and guys this time? And um, just what was the experience like for you? And tell us a little bit about what happened Friday. Yeah. So, well, the first thing I want to say is that I am so sorry to the fans in um, Long Island. I was not able to make the show. Um, it was probably one of the worst days of travel. Our flights just kept getting like delayed and then canceled. And then we switched airlines and it was delayed and then canceled and we switched airlines. And it was literally like from eight o'clock in the morning or actually it was earlier than that it was like 7 30 in the morning all the way until oh my gosh I think it was like four or five o'clock like it just there was it was just not working in our favor at all so we got in our car and we drove to the New York area but we did not make the show so that was like 
a huge bummer. And I covered some of that on my channel, but I tried not to show like how upset I actually was. I was really, really, really upset. It was not a good day. So I'm sorry to the fans in Long Island for missing the show. Know that I wanted to be there. Um, but the uh, Staten Island show, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. And I think like my favorite, my favorite part of like traveling with wrestling and is, is, is seriously like meeting fans. It, I can't even put it into words because like, I mean, this is something that I have wanted to do for such a long time. Like I've been working at this for close to 13 years now. Um, and I, I so appreciate getting to meet fans in person because like, these are the people, like, these are the people that this is why I'm here. You know, like if the fans weren't there, I wouldn't be there, you know? Um, and so like, it just, I, I know it sounds like so like cheesy, but like, it makes such an impact on me to like go to a different city outside the, the impact zone, you know? And like, these fans are like super excited to like meet me and, and I'm just excited to meet them. So that was just, I'm rambling. I'm really rambling. No, here. you're fine. You, you know, <laughs> I've met you before. It was at Slammiversary 2016 and the meet and greet after the show. And the first thing I told you was that I was really excited that you and your husband signed with the company. So for the record, when people used to ask me who I wanted to see join the company, I always said it was the two of you. That was, that uh -oh. was always my fantasy booking, like signing oh. that I wanted. So Th that's so nice to hear. Thank you. Oh, of course. I made this statement to you that I was very happy to see the two of you in the company and you looked towards the heavens and said, finally, so <laughs> this was obviously yeah. a, a major achievement in your eyes to be in this company. So tell yes. us about the road getting there. And because you were, so, you were part of several different tryouts and knockouts, knockdowns. It was a, it was a road for you to get there. Yes, it was, it was a road. Yes, it was a road. Um, <laughs> I have wanted to be a knockout since the beginning of the knockouts. I, I remember watching the first, um, it was like a gauntlet match or something, or maybe it was, yeah, it was a gauntlet, I think. And it was like, kind of like the start of like the big knockouts division. They brought in like um, Velvet Sky and Angelina for the first time. And there was like this big, like, I think I want to say it was a gauntlet match. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I am wrong. Maybe it was a battle royal or something, but I think it was a gauntlet match. Anyways, I remember seeing it and seeing the knockouts and then it progressing with like Gail and Kong and um, Taylor Wilde. Like, I knew that that's where I wanted to be. And that was back in what, 2007, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think it was 2007, maybe 2008. Um. And so I knew that's where I wanted to be. And I obviously, like, I wrestled on the indies for a very long time. Um, and then I've had, oh, my gosh, I did Gail Kim's Open Challenge in 2013. That was my first opportunity with um, Impact. And that was such a huge deal for me. Like, I'm thinking about it now and looking back on it, like, that – moment being in the ring with Gail, number one, who I've looked up to for so long to be in an impact ring. <laughs> it was, it was, it was thir three minutes of like, honestly, like some of the best three minutes of my life, you know? And I, I remember I got through the curtain on the way out and, um, we had to do like a little pre-tape, not pre-tape, uh, post-match like interview thing. And I was standing there and the guy that was holding the camera kind of looked and said to me like, you know, you just wrestled Gail Kim, someone that you've looked up to for many years in front of, you know, millions of people. Like, how do you feel? And I started bawling my eyes out <laughs> <laughs> because I was so overwhelmed with like, just feeling like I finally accomplished what I really, really wanted. And that was to wrestle in an impact ring. And then, you know, Flash forward, I had the opportunity to do Knockouts Knockdown. I did Gut Check. I did um, some One Night Onlys. And then, you know, I, I was never, like, told no. I was always told not right now or it's not the right time or, um, you know, like, 
come back to us in this many months. Like it, there was never, it was never like a closed door. It was just uh, not, not right now, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, I broke my collarbone or I don't know if I said that, but I broke my collarbone in 2015 and, um, this is my first like real injury where I had to get surgery and it happened at such a bad time because I had so much lined up. Like I was supposed to be at ring of honor the weekend after I had like two, two shows booked for ring of honor. And then I knew that impact, um, the impact was coming to Pennsylvania in like January. So I was planning for that. And then I get this injury and it put me out for six months. And I remember like at, during that time, I was so disappointed and I just had felt like, like my shot was gone, you know, like my mm-hmm. chance was gone. The time had come and, and gone and, and you know, that was it. And I know it sounds so silly because like, it's just, you know, it's not even like a huge, huge injury. Like some people, you know, break their necks and blow up their knees. But I just started thinking like, well, maybe I'm like past my prime and like maybe people, you know, maybe the, the companies aren't going to want me. Like maybe, maybe impact won't want me anymore, you know, or whatever. And it's so silly to think about that now. But at the time it was very real. And, um, what it happened was my, my husband went and did a pay-per-view in Pennsylvania and I went with him and, and then, we were asked to come in March and it was just different this time. Like when we went in March, it was like, we did a couple of, um, we did a couple of one night only's again. And then, um, and then like, I think it was like maybe later that month or something like that. We basically, they, they, they offered us contracts and they offered it to us at the same time, which now I realize like why the door was closed before, like, because it, it really wasn't the right time. And now, and now it is the right time, you know, and signing with my husband who has been busting his butt for the last like 18 years, like 18 years he's been wrestling, like, and working so hard. And for him to finally, finally feel like all that work was, was for something. I mean, that moment was just so gratifying um so it was a path it was a long climb (laughs) to get to get to where we are now but like impact is where I want to be like I see myself here for a long time and I'm just really really thankful and grateful that that all that work paid off and I really really want people to like to know that and how much how thankful I am because I really 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 am I'm such a rambler. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm sure the the listeners are really happy to hear that. And, and after I told you that statement, um, I went and talked to Marty Bell for a second, and then I went down to Braxton. He was next, and I made the same uh, comment to him that I was really happy that him and his wife were in the company. And he just very soft spoken said, "A lot of hard work." Like it, yeah. it, it just there was there was some emotion behind it. It was like he didn't just give me some some canned answer. Um, yeah, there there was yeah. definitely emotion did you ever expect to get the positive ovation that you get right now from the impact zone considering a year and a half ago you were getting booed for all the high-pitched screaming at the top of your lungs and all that (laughs) no no like not even no not even a little bit listen okay this is real i'm not even just saying this when we were going to to staten island i literally was like man like what if they oh man what if they don't really even care or like know who i am (laughs) <laughs> like, I really was like, I really, really was worried about that. I was like, Oh, you know, like we always go to the impact zone and the, and the crowd there is so great. And they're so behind me. And, but like, what if we go here? And like, they're just like, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> and, and to come out to, and, and they were cheering and it was like, Oh my gosh, it was just really like nice. I was like, Oh wow. Like, I guess, I guess like they really, they really are behind me. And that is a really, really good feeling because what I think is so special about, um, the position that I'm in, you know, um, as Ali and, and watching the character like progress is like, it was all so, so organic. Like all of it was organic. Like it wasn't, it, mm-hmm. I, I really don't feel like there was this whole, like, you know, she's going to do this and then this and then this and like, no, like, like the fans got behind me on their own. Right. You know, and I, and I think that like is so special. And that's one of the reasons why, like, I, I'm very careful about, you know, what I do and how I present myself, um, because I, I really feel like 
I feel like I'm building trust with the fans and I, I feel like it's, I just take it very seriously in terms of like how I'm presented and especially like the alley specifically. Um, and I, I hate to talk about it in the third person, but just so people understand, like, you know, I, because it took, it took time for people to get behind me. Like, I'm not just going to let that slip away. You know what I mean? I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Now, when you knew that the Ali character was going to be, was not going to be an in-ring competitor, did that, were you nervous or were you excited to be introduced that way? Because sometimes it helps to be part of something big than, than to just show up as random wrestler number one making their debut. I mean, sometimes it's it's cool to be a part of a storyline like that, but were, were you nervous or excited? Like, what was what was going through your mind knowing you weren't going to be in the ring right away? Okay, so um, I was both. I was I was super excited for the opportunity. I was just like over the moon to be doing something and to be in a storyline and to be able to work alongside Maria was so exciting and I was super jazzed for that. That said, I was so nervous. I was nervous about not wrestling or not being a wrestler because and a lot of and I'm sure every single wrestler on the planet will agree with this like I have been doing this since I was 18 years old. Right. I've been inside a ring since I was 18 years old. Like, this is a part of who I am. This is, like, wrestling is a part of my soul. This is a huge part of how, of my identity is is wrestler, you know? Um, and to sort of, like, have to take a step back from that and almost be, like, a complete novice, right? Like, mm. someone that's never been in a ring before. It was so challenging, and I was terrified. I was super scared, um, but I feel really like blessed that I was able to come into this position because one, I was able to work alongside Maria, who is incredibly talented and she's incredibly giving, and she helped me so much in terms of um, talking and promos and having confidence in front of a camera because being confident in front of a camera and being confident in front of a, 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 a like a live show or like a, an indie show or something like that, it's just totally different. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a completely different environment. And um, she really helped me develop um, into a better performer in front of the camera. Um, so I, I felt really lucky to be able to work with her, you know? Uh, th- there's a Twitter question on this and I'll get to the handle later because it, it just ties into what you were saying. Um, right. Do you... Was it hard to act act novice like that? I mean, to because so I'm going to use an example. There was always the you know Ali would get in the ring, couldn't really wrestle, and there was this time, and I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about. You and Gail Kim executed a perfect double clothesline. <laughs> I mean, textbook, and a lot of us found that we're, we just got a kick out of it because it was like, okay, we know <laughs> she can wrestle, <laughs> but so it's like obviously it's going to come out sometimes. You know, it's like yeah. riding a bike, but. Yeah. Yes. It, it, like I said, I mean, I've been doing this for such a long time. So to take a step back and, you know, not <laughs> not look like I know what I'm doing. Of course, that's hard. Of course it is. It's very hard. It's very hard. And it's very you have to like calculate everything because it does come naturally now, you know, like bumping and 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 movement and feet work and all that stuff. Like uh, it's kind of like ingrained in me. So, yeah, it was very challenging, and it's still challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's still very challenging. But but what I was going to say was, like, as scary as it was to, to step into that role, I am having the most fun I've ever had. And I, I seriously love, I love being Allie. I love it. And I know, like, I totally understand, like, the fans that um, – were fans of me as cherry bomb and I, you know, I, I totally understand like it's very hard to, to watch somebody that, you know, knows what they're doing and you, you've like spent, you know, months or years or however long, like being a fan of theirs. And then to just see them all of a sudden not know what they're doing. I I totally get it. And I understand you know, I, I get tweets from people that are just like, we know you can do it. Like, just, you know, like, just do it, just do it, <laughs> just be the slayer, just like, you know, or, or whatever. And, and I, and I totally hear you guys. And I, I appreciate the loyalty. Um, 
But I want you guys to know, like, I'm loving every second of Allie. And this has given me the opportunity to um, grow as a performer because it's so challenging. <laughs> it's so challenging. <laughs> <laughs> So you were part of the longest running storyline and that was, it had to do with the wedding. And I don't know how much you follow like the social media chatter. Cause you don't strike me as someone who keeps up with the negativity too much, but a lot of people were blasting the wedding saying it was the worst thing they've ever, the worst storyline they've ever seen. Now I already knew from my friends in the impact zone that this wedding was supposed to be uh, phenomenal. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I took everything with a grain of salt that people said, but so it ended up being one of the most popular angles in wrestling. Even Dave Meltzer loved it. <laughs> So do you think that, and I don't want this to um, act like I'm asking you to blast wrestling fans, but do you think that wrestling fans have grown to just be too quick to judge and maybe they tend to dissect things without letting them play out? Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, of course. But I don't think that's just wrestling fans. I think that's any kind of fan. I think that's movie fans. I think that's television fans. I think that any, any fan that is passionate about, something is going to be opinionated and is going to sometimes form an opinion based on something they haven't even seen yet. You know, like, mm. for example, like there are certain TV shows that I like and sometimes I ruin it for myself because I read the spoilers <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm reading the spoilers and I'm like, what, the, what the F is this? Like, no, this person can't be doing that because you know, when I get ahead of myself, right, I'm mm. on Reddit and I'm all like reading things I shouldn't be reading. But then I watch it and I'm like, oh, okay, no, you know what? No, that worked and that worked. And, you know, and it, so I think it's just human nature sometimes to sort of like jump the gun on things and assume that you're not going to like something even before you've seen it. Right. I think, yeah, I think it's just society in general. We're in a very fast society where people have short attention spans and. Right. I caught myself. Right. I like Legends of Tomorrow. Um, it's kind of a superhero thing. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I watch it on Netflix, but I found myself looking at a spoiler the other day because I, I just had to know if this one person came back to life or not. I was just like, I, I can't wait a whole season. So, I know. I <laughs> so. do it. I am so. I, you listen, I go on Reddit before Game of Thrones, before I had a chance to watch Game of Thrones, and I'm reading the spoilers, and then I'm mad at myself for doing it. I do, <laughs> but I do it with everything. I did it with the Vampire Diaries. I do it with Shadowhunters. I literally do it with every show that I am obsessed with, and there are a lot of them. I just can't help myself. So, yeah, I just, I feel like that's kind of normal. I, you know, and it's like, not everyone's going to like what you do, right? Like, right. You know, there's different strokes for different folks. Everybody likes something different. And I think that's why what makes wrestling so special is there's something for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. there's something for literally everybody. Me personally, I always was I was always drawn to the storylines and the characters. That's what I loved as a kid. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I loved even in my teens as an adult. That's really what gets me excited. Um, but hey, like not everybody likes that. Sometimes people, they just really want to see awesome wrestling. Right. That's it. They just want to see match after match of kick, butt wrestling. <laughs> and that's cool too. You know, like, Hey, like whatever you're into. Right. So about a year and a half ago, you said, um, you were the one of the first knockouts in a while to publicly say this, but you were in support of the knockouts tag titles coming back as still something you would like to see happen. Uh, heck yes. I want to see some demon bunnies with the knockout tag titles. I like that. I got another partner for you too. I think you and Ava's story have a lot of chemistry. You guys had a, s some time on one night only together in a segment. Yes. And you two yeah. have a lot of chemistry. She's not, she seems to be a lot like you. Yes. And you know what I have to say? She is the sweetest pie. Like she is so sweet and she's super determined to work hard and get better and like work on her craft. And yeah, I could definitely, I mean, I want to tag. I love tag wrestling. I love it. <laughs> I, it's 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 one thing that I actually really really love. And I I didn't do it a lot before I did. I don't know if you're familiar with a tag team I was in. It was called the Kimber Bombs. Uh, yep. Um, and you know I didn't do any tag wrestling before then. And then we were sort of thrown together, and hmm. I it was it was awesome. I loved it, and I had this newfound love of tag team wrestling. Yeah, I followed me some Kimber Bombs, absolutely. <laughs> so as I stated earlier, you crack me up. 
I have to ask you this. Maybe no one else cares, but I'm asking this for me. Where did you come up with I'm Ali, like the chant before you? <laughs> Honestly? I find that hilarious. I I don't know where it, where I came up with it. I think you know, this is this is sort of why I think I came up with it. Um, maybe I'm thinking too far into this. But so when I think about Ali being, when I think about myself being like beat down and gosh, you know, Maria was beating me down, man. Oh, I yeah. was be- beaten down by her, by Laurel, by uh, Sienna. And I think it's so empowering to be able to stand up and say who you are, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think like, I feel like there's just something very, like, there's a lot of strength behind being able to stand up and be proud of who you are. And yelling out, I'm Allie, is like my way of being able to stand up and say, no, this is who I am. And you've been knocking me down for the last year and treating me like crap. Well, no, I'm not going to take it anymore. This is who I am and this is what I can do. And that's why I always yell it before I do like a big move (laughs) or a bigger move. I'll say I did pick up on that. That's what I assumed the answer was. So even though I asked the question, my gut told me basically how you answered it was I thought you were going to say. Is your, uh, are you calling, I asked this because the Pope on commentary, bless his heart, butchers a <laughs> lot of names on, on, on moves. Do you um, are you calling your finish to Alley Valley Driver, or did he make I that mean, up on the spot? I mean, listen, I think I'm gonna have to. I, 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 Pope made that up on the spot, but I really think like that's what the fans were like tweeting at me. So I feel like, how could I not call it that? Right. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> so so what made you what made what made you can the super kick as far as on TV? Because it. Um, well, I mean, obviously, like, that is James Storm's finisher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to step on any toes, you know, and so, but I've been using... Speaking of James Storm, I'm wearing his shirt right now, but it was my full intention to wear my Team Alley shirt for this interview, <laughs> but you contacted me a couple hours before we were going to do this. I didn't know where the shirt was. You know what? I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I definitely, I definitely was gonna wear it. I just, like I said, I had a scramble, and as you know, I had some technical difficulties. My listeners know I have te- technical difficulties all the time. So, see that, but that's that is technology, right? <laughs> exactly. It, it, you know, it does mess up from time to time. <laughs> so, last thing I want to ask before I get into some Twitter questions here, um, Eddie Edwards and Alicia have both gone on record to say how long Eddie had to pursue Alicia before she gave him the time of day. Did you and mm-hmm. Braxton have in- instant chemistry when you met? Or were you pushing him off a little? Um, well, me and BS have known each other. We, we, we were friends for, gosh, I think we met in 2008. So we were friends for quite a few years before we started dating. Um, and no, like it was literally like instantly, like, you know, we were friends for a while and, you know, he was in a relationship, I was in a relationship, whatever. And then it just so happened that we were both single, we we're hanging out and we we're talking about, I think we bonded over music. I think that's kind of how it started. I was talking about like punk rock and he was talking about punk rock and that's kind of like what, what we bonded over. And then, um, and it just sort of like natural progression from there. I wish I had some like epic, amazing story, but it was just <laughs> sort of like, we just, it's like, I don't know. He's my best friend. <laughs> like, seriously, like, like we, we are husband and wife, but like, we are like best friends and it's pretty much exactly what it was like when we were friends. But now, you know, obviously like we love each other and stuff, but, um, yeah, it was like, just like a natural progression. You guys reside in New York, don't you? Yeah. So I'm from Toronto. I was born in Toronto, Canada, but I moved to Buffalo and now we live in Buffalo together. Okay. I thought you guys were in Buffalo. So that's probably not very close to New York city and all, I mean, to Staten Island, Long Island, all, no. yeah, all that. No, you'd think that, right? Like New York, but no, not at all. It was a very long drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long drive with a lot of Swedish fish. <laughs> Some people were saying on Twitter on the 4th of July, like when you and Laurel and Gail Kim had the United States flags on your outfits and stuff. So, well, they're from Canada. I was like, I'm pretty sure they all reside in the United States. Like my family's Puerto yes. Rican, but we consider ourselves American. I mean, listen, I am a very proud, proud Canadian. I am a Canadian girl. I am a proud Torontonian. I love my beautiful country and beautiful city, but America has been very welcoming to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very happy to, you know, 
down their flag once in a while. Good, good, good. And I'm a military veteran, so I appreciate that very much. Just want to yeah, say. Yeah, of course. Of um, course. So I got about 10 more minutes here with you. Yeah. So let me get into some Twitter questions. Um, World of Peligro asks, you, you've, spoken, you've spoken openly about depression. Do you think schools do enough to educate their kids about mental health? Um, no, I don't. And I think that, I mean, I might go on a little bit of a rant here and I'm going to apologize for that. Um, I think the stigma attached to mental health, mental health uh, illnesses um, needs to be kicked in the butt. We need to speak more openly, especially to kids and especially to specifically teenagers, because I know for myself, like I suffered with depression through my teen years and my 20s. And it's still something to this day that I have to keep under control. Um, it's probably something I will have for the rest of my life. And I don't know what it's like now, but when I was in high school, it's not something anyone really talked about. You know, like I think maybe people touched on it in health class, like for a second. But I think the problem is that it's not looked at as an actual illness, mm. you know, and I think people mix mix up feeling blue or feeling sad or, you know, having a bad day with being depressed when that's completely different. Like, and for anyone that does follow me on social media, um, I posted a couple of days ago about Twitter on Twitter about um, depression and it being a mental illness. And that's, that's what it is. Like, and for anyone to say that it isn't like, you need to educate yourself. You need to, I, I really wish people would spend the time to read about it. Everything is very accessible these days, especially like online. There's so many resources. Like if you don't know what depression is or then learn about it, you know, I think it's so, so, so important because the more, the more people are open about mental health issues, whether it's like depression or it's anxiety or it's bipolar, or, you know, there are people that suffer with schizophrenia. There are people that suffer with like Tourette's. There are people that suffer with like, there's so many mental illnesses and nobody freaking talks about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Like we all have our issues, you know, and we, and, and I think that if we talk about them and we make it more normal then the people that are suffering alone, that are really alone and are feeling suicidal, which is a real thing, then maybe they'll be more open to actually getting help. And that's, that's what we need to do. And it really, really upsets me when people, especially people with a big social following, um, try to downplay mental illness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you have a responsibility as somebody in the public eye or somebody that is, has a large following, like you have a responsibility to um, educate yourself. And if you're not, then do not post stuff like that. You know, don't post about something you don't know anything about, especially when it comes to mental health, because there are people that commit suicide over this, you know, mm -hmm. teenagers, kids, adults, like this is a real problem. And I, I really think, I feel very strongly that people need to be more open about it. And I've told my followers this, like, if you need someone to talk to, like, you know, reach out to me, reach out to your peers, reach out to the suicide prevention line. You know, there's, there's help available. And I'm sorry, I know that I'm like ranting about this, but it's just something I feel really, really strongly about. I think like, we just, we need to open the conversation. Uh, new age of PW, I guess that means pro wrestling. He wants to know what are the best places to donate in regards to uh, men mental health organizations? Is there a certain organization that you're impartial to? <sighs> to be totally honest, like in the U S I'm not, I'm not totally sure of where you can donate. Um, I, I know like bell Canada d does a really, they do a lot for like mental health awareness. Um, but I mean, that's something that would be really easy to just Google. <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. I, I wish I, I wish I had a strong answer and I know exactly who new age PW is. Um, okay. hello, Brett. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, like I would say like go online and do a little bit of research and make sure that whoever you're donating to like the money or is, is actually going towards, the, you know, it's going towards your organization and not towards anything else. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Hector C. 77 wants to know what countries outside of America and Canada 
you would like to wrestle in that you haven't yet? <gasps> oh my God. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to France. Um, I kind of really want to go to Africa. Um, where else do I want to go? Oh my gosh. Uh, Portugal, Brazil. Um, oh my God. China. Oh, there's so many places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you left. I, any, really, I think you I don't I think really, you left anything out. No, I really want to go to Alaska and I really want to see more of Canada. I know that's kind of boring, but like, I really want to see more of my own country. I feel like I haven't had a chance to really see a lot of, of Canada. So I want to, I'd love to explore more in there. Did you eat the food in India? I know that was something you were interested in. I think a few people were scared to do it. Yeah. Um, well, the hotel that we stayed at was more of like a resort. It was absolutely gorgeous. And the food was uh, amazing and completely like vegan friendly, too. I just told them that I, that I was vegan and actually one of the chefs was vegan. So they were able to whip me up some food and it was so, so, so good. And also... I packed like a whole bunch of food too. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, so Graham Williams, shout out to you. You were the one that asked earlier about her wrestling as a novice or a rookie, but I already asked that. So, um, all right. Uh, Violet Barities, uh, she's asking how long you've been a vegan. And then Andrew PW is asking from your experience, what is the best way to transition from being an omnivore to a vegetarian or vegan? So I've been vegan for, a couple of years now um and my my best advice to anybody that is thinking about going vegan or thinking about going vegetarian uh, number one very 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 important to educate yourself read about it read about what your body needs read about like learn how to cook different types of protein so you know get really familiar with tempeh seitan tofu, um, you know, get comfortable, uh, cooking with these things because they're kind of foreign to people, to some people that, you know, if you're not a vegan, you probably don't know what seitan is. Um, so I think it's really important to learn about, you know, what you need to eat to get enough protein and to get all the nutrients you need. Um, also it's really helpful to actually go out, buy these things and learn to cook with them you know, try different recipes, get used to eating it before you're going to cut everything out. Like, you know, get used to all these options and, and making them work for you and then take it day by day. You know, like I don't, I'm not like a, an all or nothing kind of person. I don't think you need to be extreme. Like, um, do it slowly. Like maybe one meal a week, be meatless and then try one day a week, go meatless. And then try two days and then maybe you've worked up to a week and then, you know, and like slowly let your body adjust to it. Let your like mentally adjust to it because whenever you cut something out of your diet, obviously it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. So just take your time, go easy and be patient. It's not about being perfect. It's about, um, just making the healthy changes. And if you slip up, like, Hey, listen, it happens. Just keep going. Like, don't, don't get super hung up on being a perfect vegan. Cause it does not exist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I got one more question for you here before I let you go. Um, Rusty rages wants to know when you are done wrestling, are there any plans to start up a family of little alleys and Braxton's? Uh, if we're talking about l little furry friends, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, little actual children, probably no. <laughs> um, but I totally like one of my goals once we're finished wrestling and have like settled down and have like a house and stuff. Um, I really, really want to have my own little farm sanctuary of rescued um, farm animals. That's really like that would be my dream is to have like a couple of rescued pigs and goats and chickens and 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 just let them live out their lives in a happy, you know, wonderful place. Maybe a cow or two roaming around. Maybe a cow. Maybe a cow. Yeah. <laughs> My dream. <laughs> All right, Ali. So that's going to that's gonna do it for us. I want to thank you very much for taking the time out to speak with me. I've been very excited to do this because I'm, uh, I'm not afraid to say, even as a podcaster, that I'm a huge fan of yours. You're my favorite knockout. So this uh, was very special for me. So um, I want to thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. And... You're, this was a really really great interview and you're really great at it so thanks appreciate for having it me and uh yeah yeah it was great i it was awesome so thank you 
You think you can get Braxton on my show one day? Because I emailed him about a year ago and he didn't respond to me. He, he's a butt. I will get him on your show. Okay. But just for that, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that he does your podcast. <laughs> for sure. He's my favorite wrestler, so I really want to talk to him. You oh two my are gosh. my favorites. Like, no joke. You, the two of you, are my favorites. And I've said it on my show all the time, so oh, I'm not just making well, that up. Listen, I'm going to make it happen, all right? I will. <laughs> all right. I promise. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you again to Allie for coming on the podcast and being a tremendous guest. As I said, please hit subscribe, whatever platform you're on. And I did receive a lot of Twitter questions for Allie, but we were a little pressed for time. And just like with any guest, I'm going to ask what I feel are the best questions and the most relevant questions. And that's what I did in this case as well. And that's what I'll do every time. So thanks for swinging by, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. BQ here, and I'm out.